Minutes ago, I had a thought before awakening that disappeared when I awoke. I'm sure it was something concerning Hilbert space and four-dimensional holographic computer modeling of theoretical quantum structures, space-time quantum gravity, and universal fields. Mathematical structures like cubes had X number of surfaces when they were fractalized into X number of smaller and larger cubes within. The surfaces were one-dimensional, though not points, so I must have made a guess. That is, two-dimensional surfaces, they were planes, and then examine the way myriad surface structures related topologically to known physical structures of the macro and microcosmos in a more pure reductionist form of energy. If I forgot more than I knew, it was simple enough to return to a state of morning contemplation. I watched an inner video of the universe. Omniscience might be requisite for flawless design of species evolution. If one configures an evolutionary system to generate a targeted product in a very complex ecosystem with innumerable variables, the likelihood of a system error forming, deforming the system to bring system failure to evolve a desired product are great. Omniscience usually designs an evolving system such that it's predetermined to create the proper product at the right moment. Top-down modular approaches to flow charting from time equal to zero to time equal to omega aren't the only way to format structure. One can have natural and rational numbers with different dimensional variables for vectors and tensor sets. Contingent dream sections may be modularized in chapter units, then placed on some sort of a tree chart, harvested and set like bricks into a mosaic that is the preferred narrative. If one thinks like George Lewis Borges, the mosaic may be a multi-level cellular circular pyramid with a time axis in several di directions. One might regard the evolution of human life through heterosexual events as an archetype of creation through omniscient configuration of evolution. I suppose when mankind was created and God rested, the design evolution era ceased and human intelligence became capable of deforming the functioning patterns through the genetic redesign and sundry forms of sin for itself and for others. Through seven or eight universes, they might find an emergent composite sectional single verse. Consider the point that of all the proto-human species that existed, the challenges of designing the ecosphere such that just one species would emerge to dominate is incalculable except for omniscience. Some in error believe evolution is no design or had none in the era in which God created the universe from emergence in his will to the solar system and let it become peopled before bringing the era of Adamus and Edith to fruition. Hence, it's okay to sin and miss the mark of evolving human function and conditional health. Everyone is spiritually dead unless reborn with faith in the Lord Jesus Christ looking for a dream at the edge of a desert where night reluctantly yields to day and the beginning of the eons of time and history set memories alive and roiling bittersweet and that they occur at all before destiny rests them away before seasons die and thoughts dissipate to be less than dust before faces of tomorrow disappear into yesterdays when living being is given to surpass nothingness from the will of god one might believe god is eternal all temporal fields issue from his energy when everettian fragments like illusions stir sands of time worn from mountains like ordovician echoes on planets orbiting some star, landscapes given to exist, destinies are given, missions set. Mathematical topologies of infinite dimensions allow infinite shortcuts between them. Flat two-dimensional planes with steep slopes at the center emerging from a singularity. Our MTA frames with the third dimension pushing outward as the cosmos slows below light speed with the fourth dimension penetrating like an arrow through the empty space. Energy is the fact of what mass is made of. It is an appearance for others to regard in its solid forms or in shapes of virtual particles and quantum fields. Potentially infinite varieties of configurations of mass could brought into existence from the eternal one whose thoughts are the inner sense of all it would be or becoming anything existing. Limitless quantities of universe universe could exist within the omnipotent energy and mind of God, yet we are given to speculate about particular ones. The ball shaped dimension received a zero dimension singularity mass energy went through ball for split second hyperinflaton. One field mass energy stretched across ball implicate. Surface tension is a topological force tensor for dimensional space time. Thus, shape attached gluon surface ball dimension surges through mass energy surface tension dark energy wall a pre-universe ball shaped dimension fragments grows up. Goals that ask for investments of time and effort in a world or yet one may never achieve the summit and world picture with endless stories and objects. An empirical world does not forever glisten like a shining city on a lake calling those inducted to the halls of consumerism. A transcending, surprising destiny overcoming the world emerges in the fog of time. Something never foreknown waits for being and time to expire. In the beginning of each universe, first light shone in the darkness. First light on a predetermined holographic membrane given a particular course and destiny moving through a zero energy vacuum without friction or exogenous relativistic effects. As if it were in free fall not subject to extra universal forces. I would never know if God could experience an eternal recurrence of omniscience.
probably is without a temporal yardstick for itself, for himself. That yardstick for the passage of time is time for others. Mass is a secondary quality of energy. In the basic universe, there are two dimensions for energy, perhaps, and there's the Higgs field. The Higgs field slows down massless energy from two-dimensional light speed to three-dimensional sublight speed, particles acquiring a third dimension in the direction of travel. That phenomenon allows a three-dimensional universe to exist with mass. It brings a host of questions, too. One question concerns the two-dimensional field that allows virtual particles to appear in three dimensions briefly before disappearing. What is that general field from two dimensions letting virtual particles appear in the vacuum of a three-dimensional universe. Is it one and the same as the Higgs field? People are familiar with the effects of Einstein's relativity paradigm upon three-dimensional mass. What about general relativistic effects upon quantum particles that have slowed down to sublight speed? Perhaps there is a phenomenon of variegated virtual relativity acting proportionately on particles that help form energy to particle orbits and fields 3D plus motion time of the quantum world. Virtual particles are fluctuations of a field. General relativistic effects may act upon particles with sublight speed in relation to an otherwise two-dimensional universe for energy. It is easy to speculate that gravity could be an effect of concatenated relativity acting on sublight three-dimensional particles existing within or upon a two-dimensional universe. Each brainy verse required a certain surface tension analog to stay together with orderly coherence. The primordial vacuum state remains so at the pleasure of God whom one infers was the author of any temporal disequilibrium in regard to an orderly neutral mind field. I had so many unanswered questions about mass in regard to relativity where it seemed capable of surpassing itself in its own existence. Observations of supermassive black holes have discovered rotational velocity as high as 84% of the speed of light. Can they spin at light speed? As an object approaches the speed of light as mass scales upward toward infin infinity, so does that pertain to already supermassive black holes? Does the special relativistic effect of mass increasing and speed dilating near light speed multiply the mass of black holes more than what they are in themselves? How much of the mass of a black hole can accelerate in proportion to the total mass? Is the 84% of speed of light, just at the event horizon and less so toward the center. How would the numerous differential rotational speeds and relativistic effects on mass affect the composition and structure of black holes such that it would be non-uniform in space and time? Are there transfinite infinities of mass in black holes subject to tensor quantification along the lines of Cantor sets? If I thought about seven theoretical universes as the foundation of one universe today, what mass and volume need it be? No matter. Certainty of the number of fragmented universes was improbable. Each of seven or eight universes Universes that were to serve as recycled mass for the new universe had contact with the Spirit of God during eons of their life cycles. Each knew the sight of his sun and of stars across the universal depths, reaching their own particular settings of universal laws to the planet sustaining their existence. All of the primate universes were host to sentient beings programmed from the beginning to be and become, to live and to wonder about the nature of creation, to ask questions concerning the nature of existence and why it exists at all, if it might have meaning. The people of each universe had the opportunity through the spirit to know God. Some were successful at that, even as so many others failed. Many of the latter were content to study mechanics of matter and energy and postulate the existence of all possible universes from self-generating principles. Natural virtual fields would emanate charged particles that were charged simply by virtue of being the antiparticle when oppositely charged or oppositely spinning with vector motion defined in eigenvalue states, some superposition and others not. Particles were parts of a whole. A wave might be made of a multitude of particles. Waves were concatenated group behaviors of particles. Charges were directions of motion that, while theoretically reversed could not do so without two times the opposite energy added, hence not really very reversible. Virtual particles arose from a field of absolute nothingness without change to exit nothingness and become actual rather than virtual particles without leaving a negative field charge. Subtracting something from nothingness created an unreal negative state in the vacuum. No matter, evolutionary theorists were content with the place of their particular positions within the fields of their particular universes they regarded as having arisen just through statistical laws of chance. Observations they had made concerning the tendency of disorganized particles to organize with any given volume with the stable state indicated to those without God that their own existence was inevitable and actually necessary considering the nature of mass and energy particles, waves, strings, brains, and singularities. Even so, when the time of the age of the universes were fulfilled, after each people had the opportunity to contemplate being and to actualize their particular works, after they had received and accepted or rejected the word of God and been delivered to the spirit or to the experience of eternity without the presence of God, when they had been transliterated back from whatever quantum evolution 
nation state they had designed for their social and personal being and delivered to await judgment. The universes were concluded and rolled up coincidentally at a grand conjunction of forms. At the intersection of the seven or eight universes, corner edges subducted together under gravity to form a white hole through a singularity. The white hole was zero-dimensional from the start, though it had information kept safe within Shannon's stop-loss of data entropy. The newly emergent universe appeared to have no data in it except for simplicity and minimal yet necessary and deterministic physical structure. The structure was a field with bits of data appearing as zero, then one dimension points, lines and membranes swiftly growing into quarks with a propensity toward fusion. Wouldn't every perfect zero-dimensional singularity generate the same universe without special design modification? The vast data of seven or eight universes disappeared with the physical content faster than light or the speed of gravity for an instant before exploding into the new universe, closing the singularity behind with a final soundless nothingness. Though matter and energy from the lost eight universes was conserved with transference and inflation into the singular new universe, the data was gone, hidden safely away from future residents of universe one in a dark information field that was in yet not of the universe. The information content of the eight universes could be infused, however, at the discretion of God regarding right time and place through strings and new quark relationships into the minds of mankind that for some reason, along with space receiving dark energy and volume, serve as live agents of change.